Hello everyone, welcome to the Economic Week Ahead brought to you by Business Day in partnership with the Movement Studio. My name is Eniola Olatunji and with me is... Wasi Wali. So this week we have a variety of data coming out. And starting today, the National Bureau of Statistics will be releasing the electricity reports for the first quarter of this year. Last year, in full year report, the electricity report... Discord. The discos reported a whooping one trillion naira in revenue, and you one would think that an increase in this on in their revenue would translate to great power supply. And I'm wondering why do we still struggle with power supply? Well, quite a number <laughs> of quite a number of reasons um, affect power supply. Yeah, but um, you know we are not experts, so <laughs> we, we, we just look at what the report says. Um, the report will be out today, and the MBS. Um, will the report details the the number of customers, the, the revenue. revenue generated, and um, the, um, the the energy bills, the megawatts, the raise in megawatts. So actually, for the last quarter of 2023, that's um, the three months ending 2023, the, the schools in Nigeria generated about 294 billion naira. Wow. So for the full that's year. For the full year, they yeah, made they one made, trillion naira. Okay, okay. The the highest in the last nine years. Wow. So, um, it's it's just it's quite unfortunate that, despite the fact that, the electricity the schools are generating more revenue, seeing more income, the power supply still remains epileptic. It's the, quite unfortunate. The the increase in their revenue is it also due to increase in their customer, their customer yes, base? Yes, yes. Um, the, the customer. Um, rose from the number of customers total customers rose from about 11 million in q3 2023 to about 12.12 million in the last quarter of 2024 wow, okay. so obviously in this report that will be held today there will be more increase sort of and even the electricity tariff that happened increase in electricity tariff that happened in the first quarter mm. we expect that they would make more revenue yeah we expect that will make more and uh, the 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 most important part, or say, let me say, the most um, surprising part of the electricity tariff is that it made us all know that we belong to a particular band. Band? What band do you belong to? I think band band D. <laughs> yeah. You know, quite a number of us didn't even know that there, there was a band. Me, I think I belong to band Z because we don't have light in my area. So, despite the fact that um, the tariff has been hiked by about three hundred percent, power supply still remains a problem. See, I hope I hope this this um, quarter so, things will be better. Yeah, we hope we hope that things will be better. So, but beyond electricity supply now, Zenit Bank PLC would be holding its um, annual general meeting this week, and quite a number of things will be discussed during the course of the meeting. So, what are the things that we should look out for during uh, at the end of this meeting? Oh, that's interesting. Very interesting time for banks right now. Um, Zenit Bank will be holding its 33rd annual general meeting. Yeah. But just last week, it held an emergency general meeting where it sought the approval of its shareholders to move or transition as maybe to an holding company. So very wow. soon, yes. So, so that Z means that uh, Zenit Bank, Bank is also moving to holding companies. Yes, it's going to be like a, yeah, just like GTCO and mm -hmm. the rest oh, that are holding companies right yeah. now. And it also is it's the shareholders approved it and also. They approved the move, um, the movement of their shares from the bank mm. to the holding company. But this week, um, since the recapitalization by the CBN, by the CBN mm -hmm. all banks have been looking yeah. forward to all increasing banks, their all banks have been looking forward to increasing their, their capital. They're they are making efforts, frantic efforts in eating that that target, the yes. five hundred billion naira target yes yeah, so the 500 billion naira target is for banks with international license wow. for those with national license it's about 200 billion mm -hmm. and even lower for, yeah, for regional, regional and all of that and, uh, while the any bank happens to fall under international, international license it operates outside the shores of nigeria and in this meeting it's actually going to be seeking um, approval from the shareholders to increase its shares by 31.3 mm -hmm. billion but generally all banks I've been looking for ways to increase their capital to the require to the require to make that requirement. Make requirement. I, I, some are going through rights issues. Yeah. Yeah. Some are doing like private placements. Some are like reducing their licenses. One of the problems that um, the banks 
had faced over time is because the the central bank um you know removed retained earnings from oh yes from yes the yes bank the re- removal of retained earnings exercise. And was it's been giving all of them problems. Yes, it, it was actually a very big deal for most banks. Yeah. But this area, like the CBN knows what they are doing, and yeah. what the the major part of the exercise, the major importance of the exercise is to bring in fresh capital. Yes, yes. Once the banks are adequately capitalized, they will be able to borrow very well to the real sector, borrow well to like. Yeah. Inve- they will be able to do so many things for the economy to spur growth, spur growth for and the productivity. economy. And I think it's part of the drive for the economy to hit a one trillion yes one trillion yes it's economy. a big drive for the by 2026 yes. we have five um five big banks and imagine if all of them are capitalized by five, five, 500 five. billion that would be a lot of money that is over a trillion in the, in, in Naira, the market. In market well yeah. so so beyond beyond banking um the gdp report will also be held this week um the mbs will be releasing the gdp reports for um, um 2024 and so what's what's what particular things are we to expect from this from this report? So this report is unlike the normal GDP report. It mm-hmm. takes account of the income and expenditure income and average, expenditure. Yeah. and actually is for the 2023 um, third and fourth quarter of 2023. So in 2023, in the first six months, the GDP grew by 2.31 percent for the first quarter and 2. 2.51 percent for the second quarter now we're expecting results for the third and the fourth quarter but like with was you yeah this country was has been tough <laughs> not know. just this year it was as with us in the last year uh, there we've are quite had a number of things that have inflation, inflation naira exchange, exchange rate, rate fluctuation and petrol all of scarcity also, also all of this accumulate are, yes yes so we expect that that um the gdp will grow would have grown for those two quarters yeah but compared to the first two quarters it might not be significant okay yeah so on friday we are also expecting another interesting data this data has not been published the full year for this data has not been published since 2021 and that is the air transportation report what's you what what's why are you like nigeria is a very funny place to be like yeah. why would it Full, the full year transportation report no, have been published since 2021. These are some of the gaps, some of the deficits we have in our system. You know, for 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 a system like ours, we need data yes. to question certain things, to make certain decisions, and to make certain to 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 infer. You know, but when there's a vacuum, it it leads to a problem. So the air transportation data was last published in 2021, like you've just said, and uh, for February. The, the a single route fly flight was eighty eight thousand naira. Hey, so, so you mean that if I were to take a to and fro trip, yes, within Nigeria, within I would Nigeria, spend very close to two hundred or even spend, more than two hundred in some scenarios. And and for if if uh, we are going to look at it by what is happening today now with the current exchange rate and all of that, we realize that you even spend more than that. Wow. So we are we are we are um, anticipating the report and see whether. A single flight in Nigeria would cost more than eighty thousand, uh, which it was last February. And of course, of course, on state state by state analysis, River State had the highest. Uh, f- f- if you want to fly in Rivers now, you have to pay more. Wow, to compared fly, to like co- compared to other Lagos, states like Lagos. <laughs> yeah, so that's, that's that's one of the. That's the new one. Yeah, <laughs> so we all should look out for that report and. Um, now, um, the naira, the naira has been, you know, um, fluctuating mm, between naira. one three. The naira one, broke my heart last week Monday. Mm, how? <laughs> it's reached and it, and the highest it was since March. Wow, for a currency that has been making waves, you know. It reported. It was reported traction. as the best, best performing, performing currency, currency in April. How can you go from best performing currency in April? So now, now performing so bad last week Monday. Well, quite a number of reasons have been, you know, affecting the naira. The naira has been going through a lot of. Um, no wonder traders refuse to bring down their prices if, and stuck to their previous prices if, because if you see now one, you wouldn't do that either. <laughs> actually, anyone actually. wouldn't do that because the naira, the naira has been fluctuating, and if, for instance, a trader reduces their the price, prices. so if a trader reduces his price, that means that 
the surge now will affect, affect the yeah, stock. They will make, will make, will make, will make, make serious loss. And that's one of the reasons why these traders are still uh, resisting that, oh, despite the fact that the Naira even hit 1,000 Naira some weeks ago, things are still very, very costly. Very costly. So one, of the, one of the reasons um, Naira has, uh, dollar has been beating the Naira is because uh, there's a high demand, there's a surge of foreign exchange. And um, this happened because we're in a period where people, people travel, yeah, travel and there's a high demand for dollar. Yeah. So the moment there is high demand for dollar, the Naira would depreciate. Another reason is also because um, foreign portfolio investors have begun to decrease in the country. So in February, we saw a peak of foreign portfolio, mm -hmm. in portfolio investors. And even in March, too, both data from FN, FMDQ shows that foreign portfolio investors, net foreign portfolio investors went to a negative oh. last week um, so. in, Ma in April. So like these are one of the reasons foreign portfolio investments are one of the major, it's one of the major sources of yes. dollar inflows into inflows. the country. Yeah. After beyond oil remittances, we have foreign portfolio investors. Well, so we hope that the Naira, we hope that the Naira If you, let's, let's take a bet. Okay. Where do you think the Naira is going to well, well, I think for this week, the Naira, this the Naira should moderate around 1350, 1.4. Me, I'm betting 8,300. I pray to God. Well, <laughs> well we can only that. hope that uh, a miracle, so to say, <laughs> happens this week. And that's about it for today. Uh, for more in-depth analysis on our stories, you can visit our website at www.businessday.ng and follow us on our social media platform at businessday.ng. Uh, my name still remains Wasiwali. And I am Eniola Olatunji. Bye. For more in-depth analysis, please read up on our website at www.businessday.ng.